Every day I walk down my driveway to get the mail. I'm appalled by the roadside trash I see. It's unbelievable to me what people throw out of their cars as they speed by. In 2020, over 2 million pieces of PPE were littered along U.S. roadways and waterways. Litter is not simply an eyesore. It contributes to environmental pollution and climate change. Roadside trash moves downstream to the ocean, endangering wildlife, destroying marine habitats, and contaminating a major food source for billions of people. 80% of trash in our waterways comes from land-based sources. Arsenic, nicotine, hydrocarbons, and heavy metals are released into the environment by littered cigarette butts. Plastic litter releases methane and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere as it breaks down. So I pick up the litter, bring it back down the driveway, and sort it into bins. I've always wanted to make a positive impact on the world. Even as a kid, I was concerned about the environment. We were one of the first families in my hometown to recycle. Now, with the devastation to our communities caused by climate change, I feel a new sense of urgency. So over and over again, I do what I can, walk down my driveway, pick up litter, and sort. It's just not enough. One person can't solve the problem of roadside trash. I begin to feel overwhelmed powerless to make a positive impact on the environment. Then I get an email from my neighbor Joe that changes everything. This story begins with an invitation from Joe to help him tackle the problem of litter in a different way. Joe's a good neighbor. Without a second thought, he'll jump in to help out. He's been involved in a lot of worthwhile projects over the years. He told me about a new initiative he was working on called TAP Trash Talk. Joe asked to borrow some traffic cones we put out to keep people from parking on our lawn during an annual triathlon event. I brought the cones over to his house. My jaw dropped open when I saw the metal cart he built for collecting roadside trash. I became curious about Joe's story and asked if I could do a film about his initiative. He agreed. That's when I decided to join him. Years ago, I started a diff different initiative as part of uh, a triathlon race that we put on the local community to help fund our YMCA. Uh, that initiative was called Clean the Course and I'm a, tri I'm a triathlete and as a racer in races you're fueling up, you're doing water, you're, you're throwing goop packets and, and cups of water and, and bottles of water um, onto the course. So back then I came up with this idea wouldn't it be great instead of polluting the race course that at least the race each year did a full cleaning of the bike and run course um, roadways uh, to kind of give back pick up more than what we what athletes would throw on the road so that's where my inroads with roadside litter started
tap trash talk idea came about in picking just one more tangible problem that the world has today and uh, and tackling it the tap way. The tap way is to get to the core of the problem versus just coming up with a solution for for what everyone knows to be the problem. I thought about Joe's idea that to find real solutions we must get to the core of the problem. Roadside trash happens in lots of ways. Trash bins are knocked over, garbage gets blown from the back of a truck. But according to a Keep America Beautiful report, about 81% of littering is the intentional behavior of individuals. I got to thinking that intentional littering is just another expression of American individualism. I mentioned my theory to Charlie at a litter collection event. I, I have a theory. Would you like to hear it? I would absolutely love to hear it. Well, I think, I mean, I'm sure there are many reasons why people litter, but I think it's just another example of the the emphasis in our culture on individual freedom and individualism. That sense that, oh, you know, the laws don't really apply to me. I'm special. My, f my personal freedom to do whatever I want is more important than, you the, know, community. The me, not the we. It's the me, not the we. Yeah. That's interesting and extraordinarily selfish. When individual freedom is prized over the well-being of our communities, the negative impact is clear. Researcher and storyteller Brene Brown says, As members of a social species, we derive strength not from our rugged individualism, but from our collective ability to plan, communicate, and work together. It's time to find another way. If the core of the littering problem is individualism, I started to think that maybe a solution might be building a community of people with shared values. Changing me, not the we, to me, part of the we. It seemed to me that TAP might be a unique kind of community building initiative. I soon learned it was much more. I sat down with Joe for a deeper dive into TAP and his passion for alternative ways of imagining the world. What does the acronym TAP stand for? It stands for Toward Alternative Possibility. I was probably about 27 years old when I first kind of sh made a shift in my life of with a focus on world improvement. I'm a pseudo-successful game inventor. I had done some inventing as far back as college and New Hope Products Company was to, to bring these inventions to, to market. Focus at the time was you make products in the world for doing good things. I see a world that's focused on short-term, selfish gain, um, not really thinking about what we're, what we're leaving behind. TAP, as it exists today, is a whole bunch of projects that I had done even before the word TAP came that have kind of culminated into what TAP is today, which is technology, education, um, uh, new new ways, alternative new ways that I see being better for for uh, balancing and long-term sustainability, leaving the world with um, a better place for kids and grandkids. The main mission of TAP today is just awareness building awareness of an alternative 
entire model. Life seems to be getting more and more complex and, and more and more out of balance and more and more selfish. There's a core problem that needs to be addressed. TAP's model is all about simplifying the complexity in today's world and bringing balance and sustainability to all aspects of life. I imagined it. I created that imaginary place. I kind of went there in my mind and starting over thinking about what would a new civilization model look like. All of us have this ability to do this. I wondered how Joe imagined linking up people with shared values in his alternative model. In this animated illustration, community building starts with virtual families. This is today's world. This is the near future tap world. This is a typical citizen of today's world. This is a typical person of the tap world. In today's world, families are recognized by their DNA sharing or other legal adoption means. In the TAP world, though biological and adoptive families still exist, there can be another type of family. TAP calls this other form of family, a virtual family. Virtual families form around similar thinking, especially when it comes to values, beliefs, purpose and objectives. Virtual families can include any number of family members. Members need not live together, they can exist all around the world. Virtual families help improve the world, because they help to make unique individual minds happier, healthier and better balanced in life. Virtual families can even include virtual children. Virtual families are just one solution toward improvement of global population balancing across all time. It seemed to me that there were two key principles of TAP that Joe was describing. First, the imagination takes us to a world of balance and endless sustainability. Second, being part of a community makes us happy. I was curious about how TAP principles linked up with litter collection, so I reached out to others who joined the initiative. Kirsten first met Joe at the triathlon club at the Y. Her interest in TAP started when she volunteered with Joe on the Clean the Course project. We talked over Zoom. It's sort of a new system of how we can engage with one another. I always bring it back to uh, like social media platforms. Everyone's familiar with things like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. And, you know, those are sort of microcosms and you really get a very condensed um, experience of how human beings interact with one another. Those social media platforms, they can be used for positive things, but a lot of the time what you get is this very concentrated version of the worst parts of humanity. You know, I think what drew me initially to tap besides my connection, you know, with Joe, um, is just a desire to see an opportunity for people to interact with one another, one another in a way that brings out the best of us rather than the worst in us. It's really about, you know, putting community first, but not at, at the expense of the individual. So often we think in black and white terms, and I think TAP gives us the opportunity to bring us back to the gray area, which is really ultimately where we all exist. That's sort of the basis of humanity. It's how we have survived. It's how we've thrived is, you know, this concept of finding that gray area, figuring out how we can work together, where we have common goals and interests and, you know, concerns and focusing on that. Tell us about like one of those big ideas of, in terms of what your understanding of TAP is. Yeah, so I think 
I think one of the important things that Joe is trying to convey or that TAP is trying to convey is that at least from an environmental perspective, right? There's a lot more to it, as we said, but at least from that perspective is that everybody plays a part and we really need to be thinking longer term, you know, um, when we make decisions about things. And part of it is just this idea of if you can get people to start to think about these concepts, um, that they would be more likely maybe not only to engage, but start to actually um, participate in the conversation, you know, more fully. So the tap trash talk is a is sort of a simple concept that people can get behind. Everybody, I think, agrees that they don't want to see litter around. But more importantly, if they understand the downstream effects of what happens with that litter, and and then that maybe gets into a conversation about you know the clean oceans or you know um, just you know the opportunity for people to be part of something bigger. So so that's sort of how we transitioned. And he he thought about that on his own, but I think it was based on this concept of how do we take some of these big ideas and just um, maybe boil them down to something that's just a lot more tangible. And so that's where I think, that's where I think he sort of segued into the tap trash talk initiative, you know, just one small piece of this broader um, idea of broader world improvement and recognizing that, you know, we're probably not in a positive trajectory right now. Sports fans know that trash talk is sometimes friendly, but is usually meant to intimidate an opponent during a tense competition. When I asked Joe how he came up with the name for the litter collection initiative, he smiled and said, well, you know, it's a different kind of trash talk. On the TAP website, it says that everything new is born in the imagination. It seemed to me that the idea for the trash talk cart was born in Joe's imagination. So I wonder if you would revisit that story of building the cart and how did this imaginative act link you up with your passion to change the world in a positive way? Okay, so I'd say First, the cart is a product of, of trying to engage other people. So, um, trying to think of something that my target audience, kids, would maybe really like, especially STEM kids. I had the idea for a standalone cart that a single person could pull by themselves, perfectly balanced. Um, big because there's a lot of trash out there. It all started, I actually do 3D modeling and I designed the entire thing on the software first, um, right down to every little component that was on there. Did searching on the internet for um, these special connectors which I didn't even know existed so it was a great, great find. When I stepped from Taking the cart from just human power everywhere, I'm like, well, how am I going to clean other areas that are miles away from home? And then the idea of the trailer um, that the cart would be pulled up onto, being pulled by a car. Um, the idea was I wanted to build something that was a prototype that I could then hand the basic idea off to kids in a classroom setting. One of the things that I was really struck by when I first saw your cart was <clears throat> the how you decorated it with the trash. Yes. So I wanted a piece that would be more creative for the kids, that they could go off in their own minds and imaginations, and, and decorating the cart was the solution to that. So I thought of the idea of deconstructing the cans that are actually getting the only cans, using those cans as skin. The 
Yeah, they can play around with colors, they can incorporate other signage like I've done. There's, there's other materials out on the roadside that can be incorporated into that thin skin wall. And there's almost endless colors and, and possibilities of, of doing things like an all Coca-Cola brand car. So because there's another part of the, of the whole initiative which is getting corporate sponsorship to put forth the money for the carts and the equipment of cleaning. Um, I had the idea that kids could target a certain corporation and say that they would be building a cart that, that mostly um, features the brands of that, of that corporation. One of Joe's challenges was to build a community of people with shared values in the physical world. He reached out to city officials, the Department of Public Works, educational programs, and other community-based initiatives. One of the challenges that you've been having trying to get folks from the different towns, um, their public works department, um, to accept the trash. And challenges with communication and... And, and rules, and uh, we knew this going in, I knew this was, and I contacted people almost two months ago now. Um, still haven't had a meeting with the Biddeford Public Works um, Public Works Director, so he he knows what's going on. I've taken three loads there. Everything's fine there. We just haven't had to sit down. There's a bunch of particulars to all of this. Um, what do you? What do we do when collectors find items that are too large for them to pick up? And I wanted to establish a communication to his department to let them know when they're out with their big dump trucks and a bunch of guys that can handle, they can go to the specific spot and get what we were able to pick up. So, you know, I don't want to make it the collector's personal problem or them to incur any cost. A friend of ours once said about Joe, he doesn't need a lot, he just needs breadcrumbs, you know, he just needs a little bit to sort of keep him going. And I think to get even one person at a time to sort of say, hey, that's a really cool card, you know, what are you doing? So, so the card itself is both really cool and very functional for the purpose, you know, um, but it's also intended to be a vehicle to have, you know, um, to engage people in these bigger discussions. On a collection trip to the beach, a local resident noticed the cart. That started a bigger conversation. Hey. Hey. I clean the beach. I try to every day. I asked John why keeping litter off the beach was important to him. Self-evident. I mean, this, this, this is why they come to me, because the beach is clean. <laughs> they, they, uh, I, don't, I don't think they consciously pollute the beach. And, and a lot of Mainers would think that. But this is a culture that they grow up in, mm. being from out of state. Uh -huh. This is a way that they feel that they can survive. Uh -huh. So it's too bad. But. At first, Joe collected litter alone. Then he started collecting people to collect litter. I joined Joe, Kirsten, Charlie, and Mary to get a first-hand experience picking up trash as part of the TAP Trash Talk community. We gathered for a litter pickup event sponsored by the Planeteers of Southern Maine. Joe gave us tips for using the cart. We fanned out and caught the attention of Peter, who had an interesting relationship with trash. What, what kind of, kinds of litter do you see? Everything. Um, I got behind there, I took it, put it back there, tablecloth. Really? Plastic or vinyl or some table for Really? How did, they, how did that get on the car? Pick up litter off the beach and bring it here. So it looks like litter, but... Picking the dump and beach 
and then I make stuff. You have a lot of expertise in reusing things. Yeah, like I'll show you exactly. Let me see. You. I have a, See, this is how it comes. Yeah. And uh, you got to wire brush it. Wire brush the hell out of it. Because if you just go to sand it, the sander doesn't get the grooves. So I, I brush it and then lightly sand it. And then this is what it looks like in the end. Follow me. Cable. Oh, wow. It's made from that exact same wood. Uh huh. What a beauty. That's beautiful. Before and after. Look at that. So, uh, garbage to you is not garbage. Which bucket does this go in? There we go. That's wicked apple. Can I get your help with this one, Mary? Isn't that awful? And at the base of this bank, there are layers and layers that crash and leave, crash and leave. Like you, you walk along down there, you literally, every step, you're stepping, as you can hear, stepping on glass and glass underneath your feet. So, though this is all great up here, that's where the more serious pollution is down there. See this waterway there? These all connect together and they all head out to the ocean. And that's where 95% of the litter is down there. Picking up litter as part of a group not only linked me to people with shared values, but it was a lot of fun. For those of you who are curious about where your other sock goes after you take it out of the dryer, it ends up on the side of the road. I asked Joe how he reached out beyond his own comfort zone in service to TAP principles. My immediate objective is to build awareness um, and trash talk was a way that I'm out there. People will drive by and see this crazy car and this guy dressed up with a cleanup stick in his hand just to get them to go, what's that? What's that all about? And maybe one day someone will look into it deeper. Every day I go out there, I'm somewhat feeling like I'm awareness building in, in the brain. So it's success each, each day, even if no one connects with me. I know heads are turning, I see them turn. What is this? Um, and be focused on the, the, the more community, giving, giving back to the world type of stuff. The Trash Talk Initiative not only has the potential to expand awareness for the folks who encounter Joe in the cart, but litter collectors are also transported to new places. I asked Kirsten what she'd discovered while collecting roadside trash. The most powerful lessons that I learned, and this is something that I have to keep revisiting as a human being, is that the first time I went out to do this on my own, I was in a state of mind that was incredibly judgmental. I was very frustrated because there's a lot of trash on the side of the road where I live. I was coming from a place where I had decided that it's really simple. You just don't roll down your window and throw things out. You just don't. You, you have a trash can at home or you find a trash can in a public place and that's where you put it. And I was, I was angry and frustrated and judging, you know, the people who are tossing these things out of their cars. And what I started to see and learn when I was picking things up off the side of the road is that it's very clear to me that not everybody's life is the same. So I, I collected all of this garbage as much as I could fit into this plastic container that I had with me on the back of my bike. And I brought it home and I sorted it out. And the things that I see are cigarette butts, caffeine, 
sugar, snack wrappers, basically. And so when you, when I laid it all out and I organized the trash by like the different types of things, what I was very clearly and starkly reminded of is that people are struggling. Mm -hmm. And that's a narrative that, you know, I had forgotten to think about. It was a really good reminder um, to take, take a step back. And instead of, you know, judging the people who are throwing these things out the window or the trash producers to come at it from a different angle. Not only is that a, a, um, a better human perspective in terms of compassion and being a functional part of a community, but I think it's also really important in terms of how we find ways to solve the problem. Because very seldom throughout history has judging or shaming a sector of the population really fixed anything. I think in order to solve these greater problems of humanity, we have to reach each other on a very, you know, human to human level. Your story is just amazing to me. It's like, who would have ever thought that trash could ignite compassion? After my conversation with Kirsten, I felt less angry and judgmental when I picked up litter. I felt more hopeful about the alternative solutions to environmental problems that TAP could offer. This quote from conservationist Jane Goodall reminded me how important each of us is to the future of the planet. Kirsten and Joe told me about their hopes for the future. If I could wave a magic wand, I would like everyone in the world to, ha to have the opportunity to sit down for 30 minutes and have access to the tap and get a chance to just quickly learn about it, um, you know, get a quick breakdown of how it works and its purpose. And then it would just catch on like wildfire and it would change the whole world. And we would all realize that, you know, perhaps there is a better way, you know, dividing one another into these categories hasn't really worked for us to, in the past. So maybe we try something new. A smaller goal of mine is just one to support something that I, you know, an, an initiative that I think has great value and great potential and to hopefully find, you know, other folks out there, like-minded folks who are doing the work, not just pick up trash, but to sort of be present in their communities. No single raindrop causes the flood. It's, it's a, you know, a collection of raindrops. You know, ultimately, I think the goal of TAP Trash Talk is to really draw people's attention and give them that, again, that unique opportunity to have a conversation with somebody that they wouldn't necessarily have a conversation with. Creates an opportunity to have a conversation that is really just based genuinely on curiosity. One at a time, it's, it's a small initiative, but I think Joe is, Joe's creation and his passion and his work, he's not just a, he isn't just a single drop. I think there's lots of people out there and I think he's just, he's part of a, a growing critical mass. I guess I wanna invite you to, you know, to use your imagination right now. Just see if you can tap into what, what your hopes are for this initiative as you drive your electric vehicle hitched to the, the cart out into the world. Hope is key in this world. Um, we all need it in one way it, to keep us going each day. To wake up and do the day and and try to do what's, what's best for those that are coming next. I gave up on family and friends years ago with my crazy projects. The people that I'm looking for are like-minded people that I've never met in the world yet.
when I find people that kind of latch on to tap, I send them the video. And the video is, I think, called the Crazy Dancer video. It's a youth, famous YouTube video about leadership and has this guy at a concert, outdoor concert, someone's filming him, he's crazy dancing all by himself, and the, there's people you walk, you see gathering around them and with their arms crossed looking at them like this guy's crazy, and then all of a sudden a, a second person comes in and just starts dancing with the guy. And uh, then 30 seconds later a third person comes in and then 12 more people come in and then at the end of the video there's hundreds of people crazy dancing at this concert and that's kind of how it works and it's not the crazy dancer that's the important person it's that second And caps, a little too different than uh, than most everything else that's being tackled, and uh, so we're still looking for the right the right story to tell, to get from the second people to the to the more people. Every time Joe goes out with the cart and catches someone's eye, or he reaches out with an invitation to join him. He gets closer to a critical mass of like-minded people, crazy dancing together. In the process of making this film, my relationship to litter changed. Hopelessness turned to hope as I joined a community of collectors and discovered happiness in being part of something bigger than me. My hope is that Joe keeps crazy dancing in the tapway. My dream is that a new generation will take up the Trash Talk initiative, join a community dedicated to world improvement, and rid the world of roadside trash one piece at a time. <laughs>